Okay. There are perhaps no days of our childhood where we lived so fully as those spent with a, new, a favorite toy. All right, welcome. I want you all quickly to recall your childhood on Christmas morning or your birthday when you unwrapped your present and you found that you finally got that race car track you finally wanted. And then you thought you were the coolest kid ever. That is until you went to your friend's or cousin's house and they had the wall mount set that just put your track to shame. <laughs> or whenever you had the newest uh, Barbie mermaid and you went to your cousin's house and then she had the dream house and the pink Corvette. Can you, talk, can you guys talk about jealousy? <laughs> well, guess what? In their faces, because you work for Mattel now, the company that made all of these. Hi, my name is Andre Uribe. And Raquel Gamero. And we are your heads of human resources. Today we're going to induct you, our newest employees, into the company with a short presentation on Mattel's history, where we stand present, uh, where we stand currently, and where we plan to go in the future. All right, so I'm going to take you into the history. Into the history. We were founded in 1945 in a garage in Southern California by Elliot Handler and his partner Harold Matt Matson. As you can tell, Harold uh, actually, as you, as you can tell, Matt and Elliot, our name stems from that. Well, they were originally in the service of making picture frames, but Elliot on the side would use scraps from that business to make and sell dollhouse furniture. Eventually that did so well that he and his wife Ruth were able to buy out Matt and they went into the toy business full time. In, 19, in 1959, noticing her daughter loved playing with adult dolls rather than baby dolls, Ruth decided, hey, for making the furniture and the house, we might as well make the doll. So they created Barbie, named after her daughter Barbara. In 1960, we, we joined the stock market and became publicly owned Selling, uh, with sales topping 100 million, we became a Fortune 500 company. In 1968, Hot Wheels began production, my favorite. And ever since then, we've been acquiring more companies and making more and more, more and more products that we found success in and still do today. I want to talk to you about company culture now. We are the future of play, where we believe play matters. We thrive on instilling five main points in our employees. To thrive, grow, balance, lead, and dare. We want you to thrive in our company in a fast-paced and friendly work environment where you'll grow into the future of this company. But also in working passionately, we want you to be able to balance play, literally, because we're Mattel. And we also want you to learn to lead. I know many of you are learning still because you're our newest employees, but eventually you will be the ones leading by example for the employees who are sitting in your seats years from now. And of course, dare. We all know fortune favors the bold. And we want you all to be innovative in your attempts to be um, imaginative and create future play. Next, I want to talk to you about our, how we inspire the youth in our philanthropy. In 1978, we created our first not-for-profit non uh, not organization called Mattel Children's Foundation. Our aim, their motto is to make a meaningful difference one child at a time, where their sole uh, goal is to basically help children in need. We're also uh, accredited by uh, the websites of Save the Children and According to the websites of Save the Children and American Red Cross, we, have, we are attributed to uh, donating more than a million dollars, and we are constantly at um, disaster sites like um, refugee camps or safe centers for people who have experienced disasters, where we su supply supplies for them, and also toys to give these children whose lives are, quite, are quite literally underwater or in shambles um, a sense of normalcy in that time. All right, now I'm going to hand it off to my partner, Raquel, to give you a little bit about where we stand currently. Thank you, Andre. I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit more about where Mattel currently stands today. Um, as of today, Mattel is known as the world's leading toy company in production and in sales. Uh, it has been around for many of years. What once started as a million dollar business is now a billion dollar business. Um, uh, according to our 2013 annual reports, Mattel had a, a net income of about $1.53 billion. However, in early 2014, we experienced a 4% uh, drop in income in our first quarter. And to make up for this, in February of 2014, we bought Mega Brands, which is another, another toy company. We bought Mega Brands for about $465 million. What we, in this acquisition, uh, Mattel hopes to use the same skills and techniques that Mega Brands used in their products and apply those same skills and techniques to our products. Uh, yes, so essentially we want growth in Mattel. So another thing, because Mattel has encountered a lot of controversy, we established uh, stricter goals and we also established core values and essentially just we just want to do what, what is right for our consumers. 
and speaking of controversy, uh, we have encountered a lot of that recently. Because Mattel is such a big company, we want to capture all personalities of our consumers. We want to make sure that no child is left out. And although we have good intentions, sometimes the execution can be done poorly. For example, we have the pregnant Barbie uh, who came equipped without a husband. We also have the handicapped Barbie who could not fit into the uh, dream house elevator or the pink Corvette. And we also have the Mexican Barbie, which is not up here, but she came equipped with the mariachi outfit and the guitar get up. Like I said before, although we have the best intentions, sometimes they can be executed very poorly. Uh, another important controversy that Mattel recently uh, experienced in 2007 was the lead paint issue. Uh, there was an excess amount of lead paint found in our products, our major products like Barbie, Fisher Price, uh, etc. Uh, we were fined 2.3 million by the CDC, and we did what we call uh, fast track recall, which is where we recall millions of products in a short amount of time. What we learned from this, just like every other person, we learn from our mistakes. What we learned from this is we are going to have a stricter control on our factories <coughs> and overseas. And we developed what we call a safety and responsible manufacturing manifesto because we believe in creating the future of play. Now, speaking of the future of play, we have, because technology is what's in, I mean, this is the digital age, we are adapting to the times through adapting to technology. We are extending play to apps. We have this thing called Barbie Digital Makeover, which is where you use the iPad and use the iPad with our product, where a child, uh, a girl or boy, can use the app provided with the product to basically give themselves a makeover, which includes eyeshadow, lipstick, etc. We also have the extension uh, to innovation. We believe that because this is Mattel and innovation is what practically made this company, we believe that it should be applicable to all children. So we have what we call the Hot Wheels car maker. And this is where a boy or girl can make a car to their liking. And I will hand it over to Andre to finish. Right, thank you. So in conclusion, I gave you the history of Mattel, speaking of our founding, our company culture, and how we inspire the youth. My partner Raquel went over where we are currently, our success, how we achieve our goals, the controversies, and how we learn from them. And she also went over the toys of the future and how we plan to adapt to new technologies. Thank you for your undivided attention and we'll now be taking any questions.